This is Bill Moore. I'm here with David. Salguero. Salguero. I was wondering how you pronounce that, David. We're at Mission Motors, uh, just off of uh, about 1700 uh, or 1100, something like that, 11, Harrison Street. 1177 Harrison Street. In Harrison in San Francisco. And these guys are the ones that are making the Mission. Um, started off making Mission motorcycles, and now they're getting into drive systems. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, David, let's uh, let's tell us a little bit about Mission Motors. Absolutely. Well, um, Mission Motors started life as an electric motorcycle company. Uh, many people know our Mission One motorcycle that was setting records at uh, at Bonneville back in 2009, and also racing at the inaugural Isle of Man TTX GP. Um, but now we are an electric vehicle technology company. Everything that we learned from making those high performance electric motorcycles, we're now offering that to vehicle manufacturers of all kinds. So we can show you some examples of what we have right here actually. Okay, great. So this is a 24 cell uh, lithium ion battery module that Mission makes. Um, this is one of the most power and energy dense uh, battery modules available uh, today. Um, and again, this is with the start in motorcycling. Well, starting with motorcycles, you know, you, this is the kind of thing you have to do. You have to make things as power and energy dense as possible. So it's kind of a technology compass for the company. Right. So what can you tell us about that? I mean, what are we looking at uh, in terms of kilowatt hours, uh, C rating, things of that nature? Um, I don't know the C rating off the top of my okay. head. Um, I believe it's a 1.7 uh, kilowatt hour pack. Okay. Um, Mission Motors is, uh, you know, we do the packaging and the battery management. Okay. Um, we don't do the cells, obviously. Right. We work with several different cell manufacturers. Actually, one of the reasons why we're not going in the back today is we have a lot of construction going on in a big battery lab. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, we qualify cells of all types. And when vehicle manufacturers come to us and say, hey, we want to build a vehicle like this, we're able to tell them what the right number of kilowatt hours and the right cell chemistry and the right... Uh, you know, specific uh, brand uh, would be for that application. Okay, all right. So you're testing many different batteries for different mm -hmm. people then. Yeah, we generally have the belief that uh, staying agnostic uh, to certain types of technology and going into every um, every engagement and saying what is the best right. overall system solution. Right. So somebody came to you and let's say I want to build a uh, an ATV, mm -hmm. for example. And they say, I want my ATV to be able to give my customers 20 miles of uh, electric range over, you know, bogs and trails and swamps and forests mm -hmm. and wherever people end up taking, you know, mm -hmm. even ranchers, you know, taking ATVs out to go herd cattle. Um, and 20 miles is basically what most people are going to do on an ATV in a session. Mm -hmm. So then they would come to you and say, what do you recommend? Basically. Absolutely. They, right. you know, they know their customers, they know, the, uh, you know how people use these vehicles. Right. So they're the ones that can say, it needs to go this far, it needs to go this long. This is the general operating conditions of the vehicle. This is how long it needs to last in a lifetime. And this is generally what the cost needs to be. Right. And then we can go through and we can specify the system for them okay, and now, give them the different options. Right. So then I assume beyond just specifying and saying, hey, use CoCam, use... Uh, you know, A123, use whoever, right? Mm -hmm. Beyond that, then what do you do? Well, we make all of this technology. So, okay. well, so it's not just the cells, but you know, the packaging here is very unique. This is a, a very, very small for its, for its, uh, for its, ener for its energy rating. Okay. Um, and then it's the same thing with this motor right here. So this is a 55 kilowatt motor. This is not the one in the motorcycle that we make, but it's used in another application. And again, this is it, is a, can it be used for motorcycle or is it? it can be used yeah, for okay. motorcycle. Right. Yes, it could, it could be used in several different applications. Um, but a, a uh, it's a three phase AC induction liquid cooled okay. uh, motor. Uh, it's an example of something that we have built. Uh, and again, same thing. This is very very. Uh, and that's roughly that little motor right there at 55 is roughly right around 70 horsepower. Yeah, it's a little over 70 horsepower. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, it's not very big at all. This is no. A, this is a, so this is a, a powerful little guy. And yeah. again, this comes from the motorcycles. This comes right. from saying we need to pack a lot of power and uh, a lot of energy into a very, very compact space. Right. Um, same here again. This is our motor controller. This, uh, you know, is the, is the conduit between the batteries and the motor. 
and it also contains a lot of the intelligence that manages the whole system. It's, this one is rated for 100 kilowatts. This is the one on our electric motorcycle and in some other applications we've been working on. Okay. Um, and same thing. This weighs about just over six kilograms, uh, which is, uh, in the world of motor controllers, extremely light, and it's also extremely small. Right, so basically what you're looking for is power and lightness. That's correct. And so what you've learned from doing that in motorcycles could be applied to my fictional ATV, automobile, airplane. That's correct. And, and we always and we always start at that level. You have to understand what the application is right. and say and look at it from a system level. Because if you just take things that are off the shelf and try to put them together in a system, you're gonna leave some efficiency on the table because these things weren't thought of as a cohesive system. Yeah. And leaving efficiency on the table in the world of electric vehicles is just not a good idea right now. Uh, because things you know, are not necessarily cost competitive with their internal combustion engine counterparts and uh, batteries are at this point kind of heavier than we want Oil's to be. still cheap. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is an example of, of an integrated system. Uh, this found its way into a hybrid electric race car um, that races the 25 hours of Thunder Hill. Okay. Um, so what you have here is four of those 24 uh, cell lithium ion battery modules across the bottom. Here's our motor controller on the top okay. and some ancillary electronics over here. This uh, sat uh, right in the trunk of the race car uh, throughout the race and it actually placed second in class. Wow. What, the, what type of, what size vehicle are we talking about? It was a Honda CRZ. Okay. All so right. uh, it actually, the, the car would have finished first place except it spilled a little bit of fuel and they got penalized for that. They spilled some fuel during a pit stop. So as soon as we can get rid of that fuel, uh, that, the fuel, fuel, okay, so, oh, so it was a hybrid. It was a hybrid. Ah, great. okay, all right. Yeah, it was running a 25-hour endurance race. Okay. Uh, this system performed flawlessly during the race, but it's an example of how our technology all goes right. together. Right.